short trips into space for civilians are still a dream. But experts say they'll become a reality within the coming decade. Rocket-powered aircraft will carry tourists into space at three times the speed of sound. The adventure will really begin some 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface, with three minutes of weightlessness. Test flights for the first space taxis were already taking place in 2004. But it was a private company rather than NASA that commissioned them. It's important to have companies like this become established and take the first steps. At the moment, they're able to take people up to the limits of the atmosphere. That is the first step. Initially, space travel will remain the privilege of a select few because a ticket costs $200,000. Yet flights into space may become more affordable by 2050. Then, rather than travelling to different continents for a holiday, some will perhaps head for space hotels instead. Experts are urging countries engaged in space flight to join forces, saying that no country alone can afford to develop space travel for the masses. A lunar outpost should be as independent from Earth as possible. Researchers have already found that it has the necessary resources. Water can be used to produce oxygen and fuel. And they've also discovered potential building materials, including iron, aluminium and titanium. Everything is conceivable. I think there's no question this will happen. What we've got to ask is if we want to play a role, and I don't mean just Germany, but Europe as a whole. We also have to consider how big that role will be. With respect to our technological, economic and industrial capabilities, I'm firmly convinced that we can play a very decisive role here. Engineers are already developing plans to set up solar energy parks on the moon's southern pole, where what's called the peak of eternal light is located. The area is always bathed in sunlight that could be utilized to supply developing outposts with energy. The Shackleton Crater is around 100 kilometers away. It's a good potential site for telescopes because its walls would shield them from light and radiation and give astronomers an uninterrupted view of space. Yeah. This is going to be spectacular! Engineers say that it's even possible to place power plants in lunar orbit. These satellites would be powered by sunlight and provide energy for robots. During the two-week lunar nights, the robots could then extract helium-3, a fuel for future power plants on Earth, from the moon's bedrock at the equator. Don't run into our hole. But for humans, the moon will be more than just a place to extract resources in the coming decades. It's also a site where new technologies can be developed for even deeper penetration into space. I don't think that a manned mission to Mars will already have taken place by then. But there will be people there, and that will involve greater international cooperation. We will learn there, also from a scientific perspective, to cooperate with one another in a significantly larger framework than we do today. Some experts estimate that the first humans will set foot on Mars by 2040. Perhaps by then, the age-old question of whether there is life on the red planet will have finally been answered. But in the near future, plans to settle the red planet will continue to remain just a dream.